So thank you so much for coming today. I know that this is the siesta time, <laughs> so I'm really sorry. <laughs> but you can take a coffee and take here. So we are talking about recommender systems, but with a special issue that is the conjoint analysis. So let me introduce my colleague, Jose Maria. He is one of the best experts in market research at CDO Telefonica. Uh, she has a PhD in physics and he is associate professor at Universidad Autónoma de Madrid. He also uh, has been working at Telefonica 20 years, more or less, and he always working with issues related with conjoint analysis, customer uses behavior, and so on. So, please, an applause for him. Okay. Thanks very much. Uh, and let me introduce you Paula Lopez. Paula is uh, one of the best experts in, uh, is one of the best data scientists in the Chief Data Office unit in Telefonica. He is working with machine learning algorithms and obtaining very interesting insights from uh, customer data. She's graduated in uh, statistics. He also has a, ma a master degree in statistics <laughs> and he's preparing his PhD. And he, she is also uh, collaborating with the university and several institutions as lecturer. And what is a pleasure working with, with her. Thank you. Uh, let's see this nice painting. This, uh, today we are not working, uh, we are not uh, speaking about art. Uh, maybe we are speaking about philosophy. Here in this painting of Raphael, you can see the most relevant ancient Greek philosophers discussing about how they see and how they understand the world. And like in this picture, in the Chief Data Office unit, uh, Paula, me and our colleagues, we also discuss about how to meet uh, our customer needs. And in fact, if you look in the picture, probably you can find us, Paula and me. Oh, uh, yes, we are there, just in the middle. Here, there are two of the most relevant uh, philosophers of the ancient Greek. In your left side, you can see Plato. Plato represents the world of ideas, what customers think, what customers like, and what customers uh, believe. And as you can suppose, data scientists from nowadays are like Aristotle. Uh, the philosophy of Aristotle was that the facts and observation was the cornerstone of the universal reason. And this is the same philosophy that we apply today when, uh, when we make decisions based, based on data. As you probably know, uh, Telefonica has over 300 million customers over the world, with a presence in 18 countries. Each of them with different decision-making processes, with different cultures, with different relationships, with different ways of relationship with the company, and with different things they want or different things they like. At the end, what, they, what we have are 300 million or different customers. And there are a lot of recommenders based on big data. But one key point is that uh, people don't take decision of what they do people take decision of what they believe or what they remember. And probably uh, you, you, you think in situations like this. When I, was, when, I, when I am in a traffic jam, I always think that I am in the slowest lane in that, in, the, in that traffic jam. Or when you are in the supermarket, you always think that you are in the slowest queue of the supermarket. If you look for information about uh, free online courses, you obtain uh, the statistics that say that only 20% of customers finish free online courses. However, when you ask the students, the students declare that 80% of them finish free online courses. 20% or 80%. For the teacher, a uh, course is finished when the course is finished. The, the concept is clear. But when you ask the customer, or the student in this case, for the student, the course is finished when the student has reached the goal the goals they had from the beginning. So this is the origin of the difference of the data statistics of 20 and 80 percent. Reinforcing that message, uh, winter is coming. 
Sorry? Or, or Christmas is coming. Ah, okay, sorry. Okay. Christmas <laughs> is coming. If you, uh, Christmas is coming, and probably you are preparing presents for some special person. If you only take a decision about the present, taking into account the big data, you are going to buy something based on previous purchases of the customer or purchases or other, or other people similar to that person. However, maybe it's also interesting to ask that person, what do you like for Christmas? But if you only ask to the customers, maybe he only say to us uh, little things like, I want a board game or I want sportswear. But big data can help us to learn the idea. So, what is the best board games for families? Or maybe, what is the best sneakers for the best athletes? So, I think that there are no opposed concepts, but complementary. And in this sense, I'm going to explain the, our study case, the smartphone world. We know that choose a good smartphone is an easy task for all, at, all us. Why? Because there are a lot of devices and a lot of features to analyze. And please, Jose Maria, if I tell you, do you want a good battery or a the latest facial recognition for your smartphone. What do you, what do you prefer? I, I always have my charger with me, so I prefer the facial recognition. All right. So this was easy. But if I tell you, you want the biggest screen or the latest facial recognition or a low weight or maybe so on, there are a lot of features to take into account, but, not, but only <coughs> Uh, but you have a lot of possibilities to combine all of them. So you need a tool like big data to sell it. That. And I forget the price, that is so important. So let me start introducing big data. We know the value of data. Uh, we know that as a company, we need big data to take data driving decisions to know what customers will be doing in the future, and to know what scenarios we are going to, <coughs> to, to encounter in the future. So, let me start introducing our problem. We have a world of no historical information. We have to, <coughs> we have to use a different algorithms to work without historical information. We, have to, we don't have it. And we have to split our devices in futures because we don't learn about something like devices that are really changing in the real world. So we have to do all that in real time and from multi-source uh, multi information available. So, let me introduce with the brain of our product. Our product is composed by three parts. Uh, the first one is the what algorithm. This algorithm is based on a reinformer learning one. <coughs> this it will be useful to our customers to know what device I have to recommend to them. For another hand, we have to know where is the best channel to do it? So, where? And the third part is tell us why we are recommending this device and not another one. This is a part uh, formed by a natural language processing. So, I'm going to introduce the what and the why part, but I'm going to and not to, uh, to explain the where part because it's out of the scope of this talk. So don't be crazy with this schedule. I'm going to start explaining the algorithm that is inside the re device recommender that, uh, that is called contextual multi arm banded algorithm. This algorithm is based on a context. We have a thousand of features about our customers, and we have to sell it one device. 
This device is selected in a base of a probability model in a linear variance probability theory. Select one device is called an action. And as you can suppose, in this kind of algorithms, multi-arm, we have several actions. This is several arms. So when you choose one arm, this is one action, one action, we have to show that to our customer and to tell him, I recommended you this device. And there are two options. First one, he likes it, and second one, he don't like it. So in both cases, we are learning. We are learning about he bought the device we are recommending, but we are learning too if he don't buy the device that we are recommending. Uh, and this way, can we can learn. This is easy. In the first case, we are <coughs> reward our algorithm. And in the second case, we are penalizing the probabilities of our model. In this kind of problems of recommender systems, it's typical to use collaborative filters. In this case, it's not possible because <coughs> collaborative filters are very useful if you have valuation or preference of our products or, or of our items. But in this case, we don't have this kind of market because the smartphone world is so changing. So it is not possible to do that. For another hand, we have the Y component. This component is able to build a sentence that can huma humanize the recommendation. In this way, we create a sentence formed by a customer feature and a top feature to recommend. We are going to show you an example to understand better. This is based on a cognitive process, concretely in a natural language processing. This is an example. For being a customer without limits, who enjoys shooting impressive photos, maybe you are interested in this Model X with an enduring battery and able to capture any perspective of your view. This is an automatic sentence created by our algorithm. As you can see, the first part is composed by two customer features. These features are without limits and shooting impressive photos. As you can see, we know this information about the customer. And these two features are selected in based on the probability model. For another hand, we present the recommender device. The recommended device is, in this case, a Model X, but uh, we normally present the brand and the model, uh, not anonymous, obviously. And in the third part, we have the device recommended features that are in this case and during battery a capture any perspective. As you can see, the first part and the third one are correlated. We know that he don't have uh, he consumes a lot, I'm sorry. So we are going to recommend a good a good device with a good battery. And I know that he has a good camera in her current device, so I'm going to recommend another device with the best camera of the market. So, Jose Maria, it's your turn. Now, I'm going to explain you why it can, what kind of information we obtain from market research to add to the big data available uh, information. The market research technique that, you, that we use is the conjoint analysis. Conjoint analysis try to understand how customers take decisions based on the attributes of the product. We are going to see that within an example. Imagine a crucial decision that we all take every day. Where to drink a coffee with your work colleagues. When you are going to drink a coffee, you have different uh, options. Maybe you can go to the uh, office coffee machine. Maybe you can go out, out of the office and go to the corner and drink a better coffee, but a bit more expensive, more time. Or maybe you can go to a top brand coffee shop, but maybe a bit far and a bit expensive. What happens when you are taking these decisions, you are 
measuring in your head the trade-offs between the different attributes. In this case, we have three attributes. We are simplifying, we are going to consider only three attributes. We are going to consider the price, the quality, and the time. Each person is going to take its own decisions, and probably the same person in different circumstances are taking different decisions. So we are obtaining a probabilistic model. You can think things like, oh, today is a special day, uh, I want to go to the best coffee shop. And then you are going, in this case, to a top brand coffee shop. Or maybe you are thinking, I don't have too much time today, and I need a good, a good coffee. Then you are going out of the office to go to the coffee shop at the corner. Or maybe you think things like, I have no time, I need a very fast coffee. And then you have to go to the office coffee machine. Then conjoint analysis, analyze these decisions to see if for you is more important in each moment, the price, the quality, of the, or the time. In the case of uh, the smartphone recommender, instead of uh, price, time, and quality, we are, consider, we are considering a lot of uh, attributes like price, camera, selfie camera, the processor, memory, and of course the brand. There are much more attributes to take into consideration, but take into account that for customers, they only take decision based on probably in a small amount of these uh, attributes, mainly, mainly brand, uh, price, and maybe camera or memory or things like that. Each attribute is divided into levels. So with distribution of attributes and distribution of levels, we can cover all the possible uh, smartphones present or future f smartphones. So we can arm a recommendator for all the possible smartphones that could be in the, in the market. For example, for the brand, we have different levels that could be brand one, brand two, brand three. We are going to speak about Apple, Samsung, Huawei, CTA, Alcatel, Motorola, etc., 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 adapted to every market of Telefónica. And for example, in the camera, we can study the importance or the relevance of the uh, camera ranging from 2 megapixels to 20 or 25 megapixels. And the same for all the attributes the price, the selfie camera, the processor, the memory, etc., etc. What customers see are random cards with random smartphones inside, like the above. In this case, a customer are doing the, the survey and see three different smartphones. A smartphone A, say for example, is brand one, is a very good brand, with a lot of uh, very good uh, features, uh, camera, screen, memory, but a bit expensive, $900. And there is a second option, brand number two, is a good brand also. No so nice features because the memory, the camera, and the screen are lower, but it's cheaper than option A. And brand number uh, three in the option C has a nice feature, is, uh, the brand is not so good, it's brand number three, it's not so good, that, mm, not so good than one and two, and it's uh, cheaper, only $200. And there is an option that is, none of them fits my needs, so I will choose none of them. In your case, Paula, which one will you choose? I found the brand one, so I'm going to choose A. Okay. Then every customer has to do between seven or ten of these choices. Okay, so we have several choices per customer. So in our research, we can study the patterns of every customer. We can see if the customers always choose brand one, always choose the cheapest one, always choose the one with the highest memory, or maybe always choose the one mm, with the best uh, memory, but below $300. Uh, $300. We have at the end around uh, 2,000 or 3,000 3, interviews, so different customers. Then we can introduce the utility, co the utility concept, because from the point of view of the facts, if you have 20 megapixels 
is, uh, is better than having 15 megapixels or better that, than having 10 megapixels or 5 megapixels. But in the head of the customer, that is, that is not happening that way because maybe for a customer it's enough to have 10 megapixels. So moving to 15 megapixels or 20 megapixels, the, if the customer doesn't need so good camera, has no ad value added for him. So the customer doesn't need 15 or 20 megapixels, so no, has no extra utility. What we are going to, to, to try to obtain is the utility of every attribute and of every level, every level of every attribute. And we can do that calculating the total utility of the smartphone, that is the sum of the utilities of every, cast, of every component of the, of the smartphone. To do that, we have a lot of equations per customer because we have explanatory variables that are the utility of every level of every attribute. So we have a lot of explanatory variables, but we have some dependent variables that are what customer has chosen in every car. And we, uh, and we have a lot of information because for every car, we have uh, the answer of the customer saying if they choose or not choose that, uh, that option. The results are results like this. We have uh, the utility for the camera and the utility for brand. And we have the utilities for all the rest of the attributes. In this case, for this customer, that we have is the if we move from 5 megapixels in the camera to 8 megapixels, the utility is increasing a lot because we see that the curve increases. However, if we move to 10, 15, or 20 megapixels, that we see is that the utility for that customer is increasing but more slower. So, for this customer, maybe a smartphone with 10 megapixels is enough, maybe 10 megapixels. And if we look at the brand, at the brand uh, figure, that we see is that for these customers, brand number one and two have a high utility, however, brand number five or seven has lower utilities. If we are going to recommend a smartphone for this customer using only these two, uh, features, we will recommend probably a smartphone of a brand one or two with a camera up to 8 megapixels. And, and now, the time where we place together the information from the uh, uh, market research and we join that with the beast La bestia parda. of the uh, big data. So, thank you, so, Jose Maria. So, can we merge the two words, that is, the big data and the conjoint analysis? We do that in a simple way, that is, with a clustering over our customer's base. With that, we can uh, search and find different behavior of, uh, behaviors of our customers and create different profiles. This is an example of our base. So the clusters are, are characterizing by some features like the brand, for example, the main brand, brands versus other brands, or the type of contract is not the same, a uh, prepaid or a space, etc., and so on. And each cluster has a questionnaire associated, and these results can be extrapolated to all the base due to this clustering. So, this is the equation. The new score that we calculate is composed by the score of Tynet by the contextual multi arc banded algorithm multiplied by the exponential of the differential of the utilities. This is not so complicated because the differential of the utilities are only the subtraction between the model utility of the model to recommend and the utility of reference. This is uh, an example here in the table. And with that, we obtain a new score that is used to recommend. We use that in a real case, and this is we obtain a eight, by eight times we succeed our model versus a random recommendation. What is that? The standard models we used in the past were eight times 
uh, worth uh, in comparing with uh, our recommendation system. So the result is... The results we obtain an incredible use case and very funny. Which is, uh, this uh, use case is very flexible. We can apply that to all the, in all the, the countries or the, the presence of Telefonica. Also very robust. We can do that with the smartphone, but we can do with other products. Yes, and we can do it that in a real time, so really fast, obviously, and always with total transparency. We only use the data of our customers if they want this is if they want to buy a new device and they want to that and we can help us, so we are going to do it. And also adaptability, because we can do that in all the countries, all the products with a lot of uh, attributes, features, etc. So, so thank, thank you very you so much, much for coming. Hope you have enjoyed the presentation. Um, any question you can <laughs> tell us now. There is any question? Maybe not. <laughs> okay. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you very much.